Soy Dora. <laughs> video this is not a funny video this is a video about my actual trauma but the way my neurodivergence was set up like by the way this is a complete personality trait for anybody who's like oh she's making her neurodivergence be personality yeah the fuck i am it makes me who the fuck i am anyways i want to talk about um how fucked up i've been how fucked up i've been because of my last relationship. And I really want this, actually, the, the premise was originally going to be how I'm healing from it. <laughs> Bitch, I'm, I'm fucking going through it. But this video is really gonna be about, um, like a warning, a warning to young girls. That's what this video is going to be. Um, and I'll share some of my experiences, but honestly, like the nitty gritty, the stories, the, the details of it all, I've shared that on my podcast, but I just feel like it's like a safer space for me, less room to comment, less room to judge. Um, but I like to bring my content here to wherever we are. <laughs> um, cause I just feel like it's also, it can also serve as a safe space as long as I don't read the comments sometimes. But so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Lovatia and I, um, I'm originally from New York. I moved to Atlanta on my own in 2016. Um, 2017, I met the person that is now my ex and 2018, we got together, officially, officially. Um, I used to say that I was in a relationship for three years, but when I do the math, I think it was literally two years and I'm just a little bit dyslexic, which I fully acknowledge like math has never really been my thing, but I'm working through that. Um, and I genuinely think that like math dyslexia is a thing. I'm not being funny at all, like mixing numbers up and stuff like that. Um, it's just something that I, I've been growing through, but I was in this relationship, um, and it was my first official relationship ever. And if you know anything about me, then you know that I had been looking forward to being in a relationship forever. I always had older friends. All of my friends were in relationships, um, whether they were queer relationships, straight relationships, and... I don't know why I just did that with my eye. I'm not gonna judge myself though. I just was like, did I just pick eye cred? But no, I didn't pick it technically because there was no eye cred to be picked. Anyways, um, and y'all might be like, oh my gosh, she's all over the place. I'm like, where's she? Or maybe you're not like that. Maybe I should make the assumption, but bear with me because I want to have some levity in the video, but I know that it's a, an important topic as well. So am I looking at the wrong place? Where's the camera? Oh my God, the camera's been here this whole time and I've been looking over here. Okay, so I was in an abusive relationship, trigger warning. And I had been in that relationship, like I said, until 2020. Um, but what I didn't realize is how insidious the voice of abuse is when, period. <laughs> how insidious the voice of abuse is. It's crazy because just now I feel like I went through so many things in my mind. I was like, what if my mom watches this? Like, I don't want her to be hurt by this. And I think that that's sometimes why I suppress some of my stuff from my relationship. Um, one, because it's really, really painful to re-engage in and like remember. Two, is that it's really hard to stomach that I went through that. Like I'm still unpacking a lot of stuff from that. Um, and three, I, it's just like, damn, my specifically my, my parents, but at the time it was really my mom that I felt like was really pouring into me in those moments. Um, I just, I guess I felt shame because I feel like I was hiding certain things from her. I feel like I was hiding certain things from, from myself, which is why I couldn't even confront things with her. Um, but I feel like I have to share all of these little tidbits and pieces because someone may be able to relate to this. Um, and it may like save a life or, or help someone get out of something. Um, but yeah, I, I was in an abusive relationship physically, mentally, emotionally. Uh, what else is there? Shit. 
recently I've um, been diving back into my head of our sexual experiences. This is a person that I shared my virginity with, but the craziest part is that I do not remember a majority of our experiences. And I know that we were sexually active for at least a year, a year and a half. So to not remember, I'm like, what is my brain trying to protect me from? Because the things that I do remember are still hard for me to even talk about. Um, and if I did share them, I definitely probably wouldn't share them on like YouTube. If anything, maybe one day I'll share it on Patreon if we have like a sleepover and the conversation gets deep like on Zoom or something. I still wouldn't do those two. But anyways, I still like to say um, I was abused in my relationship and I used to think that I too was an abusive person. Like, I thought that, like, that, like, not even put it on my resume, but, like, oh, yeah, like, I, too, co like, committed abuse. Until I reflected and I looked back and I was fucking for real and I learned about reactive abuse and I learned about um, self-defense. And I learned that in some relationships, they can be so toxic and manipulative that they will fuck you up to, like, to the extent that you can be fucked up. So you lose it and then when you lose it and you retaliate they say look is that i see this is exactly why i do what i do because x y and z look at you you do this you do that and you're so bad and they're able to reframe it to you being the bad person um did i do things in the relationship that i wasn't proud of absolutely can i take responsibility for those things that i did during insanity absolutely like without a doubt um the scary part though is because i had never been in a relationship before it's not like i had tests to see if this is how I showed up in all my relationships. Whereas for my ex, I had literally watched him be in a relationship with me were quote unquote best friends, fucking around. It's a whole web series that I wrote about. It's called Pure. It's somewhere on this YouTube channel. Um, and I don't mean to be dismissive about it, but I just know that when I first wrote the story, it was in such like a fairy tale, love us, lover kind of thing. And now that I have the reality of the whole situation, it's just I don't see the divinity of it anymore. But um, it led me to where I am, so no judgment. Anyways, I still have to say, um, if I could give someone tips on how to tell if you're being abused, and you know, although I said, oh, this video is for young girls, this video is for everybody. This video is for young men, young women, older women, older men, middle-aged women, middle-aged men. Abuse has no restrictions when it comes to age, body type, gender, preference, any of that, non-binary, it doesn't matter. Um, and I think that there are also common misconceptions that there's no abuse in same-sex relationships, which is far, 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 far from the truth. Actually, I think that there's more to be discussed with that, especially because it's usually like, oh, if a man hits a woman, he's bad. What about if two women hit each other? Like, no one's ever really dissected that aspect of things. So, anyways, abuse is bad no matter who's doing it. But if I could say some red flags that I would look out for in the future... Um, and I wanted to share this video because I really want to make some meaningful videos. I'm working through a lot personally that I don't necessarily feel ready to share. Um, but the things that I do, I feel like they could be helpful. Especially now because I feel like I have been actively confronted with these thoughts in my mind. Um, and they're so bad, y'all. They're so bad. They're like... Um, oh, I, I, I almost don't even want to say them out loud because they're so hurtful. Yeah. Uh, but one of the ones that, that came recently was you talk too much, you, you, you nobody wants to hear that, you're too negative, you're like a Debbie Downer, you're so negative, you never have anything positive to say. Um, and, and when those core thoughts keep looping in your mind and then someone might say something really, really, really little or someone might say something so small that it doesn't seem like it can be something that can impact you, it, it's so impactful because, um, because it was already a wound. And that person doesn't know that that one tiny grain of salt just infected this whole area again. And that's the hard part. I talk about this in my latest podcast episode about like triggers. Because at the end of the day, triggers really are our responsibility. They really are. They really are. Not just that I became agoraphobic by one point because I was so scared of being triggered outside. And I was so scared of offending someone and being mean to someone. The entire time I'm offending myself and being mean to myself. Um... So I decided to start this series to dissect a little bit more about abuse, maybe have a little bit of a community, 
maybe just express myself, but I know that for the last four years, I didn't feel comfortable talking about this. And now I, I think that maybe there was so much shame built up in my body and I didn't put that word to it until it happened. I mean, like until I really felt it. And now I see like, I feel like I live such a shameful existence because of decisions that I've made or because of ways that I've, I've allowed people to treat me. Um, when in reality, that's just due to their own demented shit. Like, I, you know, it's hard. It's, it's hard to take responsibility, but also like let go of the blame. Like, I think you could take responsibility and not take the blame. I don't blame myself for being treated the way that I was treated. But for the sake of finding power, and this is just for myself, I'm not asking everybody to do this, this is my own personal journey. Um, but for the sake of myself, in one of my most intense therapy sessions, I remember having to take responsibility in it for certain things and it was so freeing. So it's like, I'm not blaming myself for being abused, but I'm taking responsibility now for ignoring a lot of the signs that were very clearly abusive um, for the sake of just wanting to be loved. And in taking responsibility for that, even though the love was very pseudo, very, very transactional, very limited, um, it helps set me free and it helps give me my power back in knowing like, okay, so I will never go through this again because I've, I've learned that there are some spots of love that I'd love to give to myself before entering a new relationship again. And these are things that I, I felt before my relationship, but I was so in the spiral of the drama of me and him and what led to us being in a relationship that this, this lesson had to come at this time. Like I had to I had to understand that the voice that's in my head is no longer my voice that's in my head, that's actually my ex's voice. Um, and that was like an epiphany that I had today after trying to figure out why it was so mean. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I know that I can be very vicious with my words sometimes, but to do that without needing to, like I can be vicious with my words and I have to defend myself like in a very dire situation, but to do that in a situation where I'm talking to myself viciously, that doesn't even sound right. So um, some things I'd like to share is one, one of the clear signs that you're being abused in a relationship is isolation. And um, that means like isolating you from your friends, from your family. There was a point where I was isolated from my mom uh, isolated from my friends, uh, job isolation. You can be isolated in many, many, many different ways. Uh, but basically, it's a really helpful manipulation tactic for your abuser to make you believe that they're the only one. They're the most important person in your life. No one else will love you the way that they do, etc., etc., whatever the rhetoric is. Um, another sign that I would say is how the person talks about their last relationship. I can't even lie. Like, there were certain things that he would say and certain red flags. He'd be like, oh, yeah, like... There was a hole that was punched into my wall and she did it. I'm not saying that his ex-girlfriend wasn't capable of doing that, but it's easy to share that story for him now that he's not in the relationship and she can't defend herself. So of course it's easy to blame her for the hole in his wall. Another thing that I think would definitely be a warning sign for abuse is, and this is a sign of narcissism, someone like boosting you up in public, bigging you up in public, making you feel so beautiful, so sexy in public, and even more so behind your back. Like it wasn't really done in front of my face. It was really more so that people would come up to me at work like, oh my God, all he does is talk about how big your behind is when it's not in jeans and blah, 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 whatever. Um, but talks to you behind the scenes in a shitty way. I think that that is a tall tale sign. Um, and sometimes we hold on to those small little things like, oh, but he was so nice to me when he said this one thing about my, so about my butt and my jeans. But what about when he's calling you ugly at home and all of this stuff, you know? So I think that that's really, 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 really a big one. Um, and that's narcissistic because people want to, the abuser wants others to see you as, as to see them as a good person, as the best partner, as the best boyfriend, as the best this, that, and the third. Um, and they don't care about how you're affected behind the scenes because no one's around to witness, so it doesn't really matter how you're treated. Uh, another thing that I would definitely say is really important is there's a fine line between sharing what you went through as a child and sharing how you're healing from that versus sharing what you went through as a child and then literally putting your partner through that same thing. Like my ex told me about some of the things that he went through as a child and then literally verbatim said things to me that I know his abuser has said to him or done things to me that I know his abuser had done to him. And that was um, 
was really eerie, like really eerie. And that's after I told him to go to therapy, keeping in mind, I never saw any proof that he went to therapy. He'd leave the house for an hour and a half, but the stories that he would bring back to me from his alleged therapy sessions as someone who's been in therapy since she was 15, on and off, that he wasn't really going to therapy sessions um, and didn't really find somebody. And I didn't look for proof, I just prayed. <laughs> the proof was not in the pudding. Um, so yeah, I think that that's definitely a red flag. Uh, possessiveness, I don't even know if I finished that thought. If I didn't, forgive me. But possessiveness would probably be my like fourth glaring red flag. And, and I've seen this happen in couples and it starts off where people act like it's real cute. Oh, my man doesn't want me to wear this. Oh, my girl doesn't want me to wear that. Oh, my girl doesn't want me to go here. Oh, my man doesn't want me to go here. And for safety reasons, if your person is like, hey, I don't want you to go to this club tonight because it's, this is a little bit sus. Uh, but like, feel free to go out. I mean, that's your prerogative. But I just want to let you know that like, that is how we advise about this club. Okay. If they're a little clairvoyant, then I guess that's fine. But if they're like, no, I don't ever want you to go out without me. Like, I want people to know that you're with me. Like, this, that, and the third. For me, like, I soar in my independence. And I feel like in situations like that, that's just extremely possessive. And you cannot own someone physically. And I can say this as a former possessive person. I've had to actively work on this. A lot of people don't take the time or the pause to be able to work on things like this. And I'm not like, oh, kudos to me. I'm just really proud of myself for it. Um... And honestly, for the universe, thank you for making me take this pause. But yeah, I think that um, society is trying to make possessiveness seem cute. And like it shows that your partner cares about you. And I don't think that those two are synonymous. I actually think it's a glaring red flag. My partner didn't even want me, my ex didn't even want me to hug a guy. Um, no guy. Like there was no guy. I'm sure, I would be surprised if he wasn't jealous of my gay best friend at the time. Like I really wouldn't be surprised at all. Um, he was jealous of my me and my female friends relationships, thought I was gay, which I was. You was right about that one. Um, so yeah, any guy that was kind to me, I wasn't allowed to have any type of communication or friendship with him. So I think that that alone says a lot. Um, if people come into relationships and they're openly insecure, but they're actively working on it, I think that that's very different than someone coming in acting like they're really confident and then being really insecure and that showing in many different ways so yeah I think that those are probably my biggest like highlights or not highlights lowlights or things that I'd like to bring to people's attention because these are some of the insidious things that happen and it's like oh he's just talking about his ex this is no big deal or oh he just th he just wants me to wear this because like I remember looking back at pictures of myself and the way that I dressed in my relationship and being like why was I dressing like that? But I remember the first or the second month that we had been together, he literally was like, I don't want you wearing that. I don't want you wearing this. Like, who are you trying to impress? I'm trying to impress myself, and I don't like the feeling of clothes on my body, brother. But, yeah, I think that um, if you if you were brought to this video and you're in a relationship, it might be a little bit of a sign. Um, or maybe you were just curious. But if it was a little bit of a sign, I'd just say be gentle with yourself. Um... For me, I, I talk about this a bit on my podcast as well, but I don't even think that I created an exit strategy. I think that it just got so bad and little things had been building up. And I share these stories on my podcast, like I said, so I'm not going to repeat them here, but certain conversations I had with my mom, certain conversations that I had, just certain glaring things that were like, hey, Atia, you can't ignore this anymore. Um, and I also talk about what my final straw was, but I hope that... People can watch this video before they even get to their final straw. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to comment them. Um, we can also talk about this on Patreon if you feel like YouTube is too public of a space. But I just wanted to give my platform a little bit more depth, share a little bit more about what I've been through. And that way I can let it go. Sometimes I feel like I want to remember, remember it so I'm not punished again. Sometimes thinking that certain things happen to me as a punishment, when in reality I think that they're really a, um, a redirection um, my soul really wants to say a blessing but it doesn't feel like a blessing to have to spend the next the last four years healing from something and still to this very day it still feels so like heavy it doesn't feel, always feel as heavy but I think that noticing that my inner voice is literally a reflection of my ex is heavy and that's a hard pill to swallow um, and I'm not saying that I didn't have an inner voice before my ex 
but I think I did a lot of work to be able to heal that inner voice and now I, it's insidious having someone else's thoughts and voices in your head but it's also really free because it's like oh wow once I get these out and once I erase him like I'm free I'm free again so that's the part that I'm going to focus on the freedom and the excitement that these voices are no longer mine these are somebody else's voices so once those go I can replace them with some beautiful voices for my higher self and my inner child and all that stuff so anyways I hope that this video finds you well I hope that um this video brings you some sort of harmony within or without, however that may look. I love you so much. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to give yourself a hug. And be kind to yourself and be kind to others. And if you're watching this on Patreon, thank you so, 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 so much for being a patron. And if you're watching this on YouTube, join me on Patreon. Let's have some more discussions like this. Love you.